Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Clam, and today I want to show you guys how to do an atmospheric perspective monochromatic painting. What you're going to need today is going to be a paint tray, a paint brush, you're going to need acrylic paint or tempera paint, and you're going to need one color and black and white. I'm using blue. You're also going to need a water dish. All right, here we go. Oh, actually, and you're going to need a Sharpie. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to draw out. Uh, this is just a practice, okay? So this is um, going to have some drawing, some lines on here. Uh, we're going to draw out an image um, starting with something that's close to us and then um, different items getting further away from us. So let's do, let's say, um, uh, a hill. Okay, we're going to put the silhouette of a tree on this hill. And behind that, we're going to do another layer. Let's do kind of some gently sloping hills. Okay. Behind that, maybe a little more mountainous. And behind that, let's put some actually, you know, pretty steep, jaggedy mountains. Okay, so there's our little outline. And we're going to paint this using our acrylic paint. Um, and it's going to be just like a value scale. Actually, I just did a value scale in a different video, a demo. And we're going to start with white and then add a little bit of color until we get to the solid hue. In this case, it's blue. And then we're going to rinse out our brush. And then we're going to start with a puddle of just blue and add a little more black and a little more black until finally we end up with solid black. Okay? We're going to start with white and work towards black because we don't want to get any black in the white. But if we get a little tiny bit of white in the black, no one will ever know. Okay, so here we go. Take your brush, uh, or actually I should say take your paint. Uh, make sure you shake your paint really, really well. And I already kind of have some puddles going on here, but I'm gonna put a little bit of white, a little bit of blue, and maybe you just need just a dollop. You can always add more paint, but you can't put it back. So don't be wasteful. Always start with less than what you think you're gonna need. Add more if you have to. Okay, I'm gonna start with my white. And uh, hopefully I won't end up painting on my desk because that would be a bad deal. Uh, but I'm going to start, start with my white here. And I'm going to paint some white on here. Now you're not really going to see this very much, but if I were to be doing this on colored paper, um, you sure would. And I am totally okay with not going all the way to the edge, and I'm also very okay with um, not going right up against my black Sharpie because this is just a practice and we're just practicing how to blend these colors together. Okay, so I've got my white on there. Uh, this paper might buckle a little bit just because I'm doing this on printer paper, which is not ideal for, you know, this situation, but making the most of what I've got here. Okay, so um, now I'm going to take and my white here, I'm going to kind of pull this and make a little puddle off to the side here. Um, I want to do that because I might eventually want to put a little more white back in and I still want to have some there for myself. So I'm going to take and kind of pull that off to the side and then I'm going to grab just a little tiny bit of blue, okay? Not very much. Okay, mix that. Make sure you're mixing with both sides of your brush because if you don't, when you go to paint, you're going to end up having a, a big blob of white that might kind of get into your, your painting. So I'm mixing with both sides, trying to keep the paint on my bristles and not up on my ferrule. Okay, that silver part, so keep that paint down on your bristles. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and paint this next layer. Okay, a little, a little tip for you. If you want to get up against a, a line, like let's say I'm trying to paint up against this line here, a lot of times I see people try and paint with the edge of their brush like this, and they try to go along, and, and yes, that kind of sort of works, but if you want to streamline that process and make it a lot easier for yourself, use the edge of your brush and then turn it once you start to run out. And that goes a whole lot faster and it's a whole lot easier. Now, for my next layer, I'm pretty much ready to move right onto my straight blue. 
Um, I want to make sure I have enough of it. There's a little bit of white left in there, and that's okay. Um, just to make it so I have more paint without being wasteful here, I'm going to take and still blend that into that, uh, that lighter blue color there. Using both sides of your brush, remember to mix it with both sides. There, that's a nice value. Good change, good gradual change from light to dark. I'm doing this all with one rather large brush. If you had a lot of little details in yours, which I would recommend, um, if you had a lot of little details, you should have more than one brush sitting there with you, and then that way you can get into those little details without making a mess. Just a side note here, um, when we have a color plus white, we call that a tint. And that's a color plus white. If we have a color plus black, we call that a shade. Um, so right now we have blue and tints of blue. Down here we will have blue and shades of blue. If you had mixed both black and white, however, that would give you a tone. It's kind of a grayish color. Um, and that's exactly what I don't want here, right here, actually. So if I were to take this puddle where I already have blue and white mixed together and put some black in that and mix that up, that would turn almost like a gray color. It's kind of a muddy color. Um, I actually think it's really pretty, but whatever. Um, that would be considered a tone of blue, but I don't want a tone. I want blue and then a shade of blue. So um, I'm not going to keep using this puddle because that's black and white and blue, and that makes a tone. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse out my brush. And when I rinse it out, I'm um, just brushing it, brushing my brush along the bottom of my water dish here. I'm scrubbing that. Uh, being really careful to keep your bristles so they're not scrubbing um, and damaging your bristles. You want to keep it so that it's kind of stroking the bottom of the dish here. Okay, And then you're going to scrape off that excess water. You're going to take your paper towel and um, I just like to wrap mine around, just kind of squeeze it a little bit. I'm not pulling on the bristles. I'm just squeezing it gently so I'm not going to hurt my bristles. I'm going to do solid blue for this next layer here. That's a little tricky. The tree is not part of the next layer. You can see that the tree is actually part of the very last layer. And by painting this um, to where it's light further away from me and darker closer to me, it creates the illusion of space of atmospheric perspective. Um, and perspective, of course, you guys, I'm sure you've heard of perspective before, you know, like when you're looking at train tracks and train tracks kind of disappear off into space, off into the vanishing point. Um, this is kind of, it's similar to that. It's a much less um, mathematical approach to creating the illusion of space. I'm using color and value, um, not a whole lot of math and all that, which we will actually get into. I love doing perspective, one, two, and three point perspective, but today's not that day. All right. Now, uh, yeah, it's a little, it's a little shiny. So this kind of, it's hard to see there. If I tip it, maybe that's a little bit easier. Boy, I tell you, my kingdom for a setup that doesn't shine. Okay, now uh, I'm going to take that blue puddle and I'm going to put a little bit of black in there. Actually, forget that. I'm going to put a lot of black in there. So I'm pretty much taking my black puddle and I'm adding just a little bit of blue to it. Okay, because I do want it to have a little bit of a blue hue. I don't want it to be, you know, solid black. Okay, I'm going to paint in my very last layer here. Alright, and there we go. That is a monochromatic painting that illustrates atmospheric perspective.